Well, hello, everybody. It is your favorite day of the week. It is time for another episode of the Reality Reading Rainbow, where I talk about books by reality stars, primarily those from Bravo. I also do interviews as well, and I try to make sense of it all. I'm Les Kirkendall Barrett, and I have a guest today. As I've been sharing with you all for the past month or so, I have been in love with Clubhouse. And the thing that I like the most about Clubhouse is I get to meet like-minded people who are obsessed with our reality shows just as much as I am. And this is a new friend that I made on the Club Bravo podcast. And so without further ado, let's welcome Larry from Bravo by Gabe. Hi, everyone. Les, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. This is so cool. This is so fun. And and as I was sharing, uh, listeners, as I was sharing with Larry, it's so funny because we're on Zoom. So we're seeing each other like face to face. But I literally talk to him on every, you know, talk to him every day on Clubhouse. I'm like, oh, my God, there's like I could put a face with the voice now. <laughs> right. I know it's 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 amazing and also I mean it's it's great I'm happy as well to finally put a voice to an actual face. So hey tell us uh tell us about Bravo by Gaze and how did you get this whole thing started? Yeah so I started it in like November of 2019 um I mean I just I I, like everybody else, I just love Bravo. And so I was like seeing all of these pages and I was like, well, I'm gonna try and do this. And so I started it and I was like, I really didn't even like know of like what to call it or like what, you know, like what route to go with it. Um, so I just chose the name and I stuck with it for just a little while. And I would maybe like do like one post a week. And then during the pandemic, I really like dove into it. Um, just like as an outlet. So my poor boyfriend didn't have to hear me talk about Bravo all the time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I ran with it um, throughout the pandemic. And it's like, it's just been so much fun. I've gotten to meet so many cool people like yourself. I'll like all of the people now currently in Clubhouse, a lot of the other people that run pages. And it's just been a really good time and just a fun like hobby to do aside from like my actual day-to-day -day job. Yeah, and it, it's so funny because, you know, 
The thing is about Clubhouse that I love is that, you know, we have like full on debates about everything Bravo related pretty much. And I love the fact that for the most part, we can talk about it and have it not get heated. It's been getting a little more heated lately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <It has. laughs> but but um but yeah, but I love I love the fact though that there's like this just whole group of people who that's you know, we we talk you know oh yeah i mean i talk to some of these people now more than i talk to like my in real life friends like it's crazy right uh, so so okay what sh- how many shows do you watch what do you what do you watch normally on a, nor- a normal bravo viewing week what would you watch oh i mean i'm watching everything right now except for dallas i fell off of that so okay. I'm watching everything else are you gonna watch it tonight because it's the season finale i will watch the season finale and then the reunion yeah um so you watch like the top chef you watch oh i thought you were talking about what's on now no so right now everything or or, or everything everything that's on um except for dallas but then i yeah i watch all of it top chef i really never got into um Mm -hmm. but a lot of people have been talking about it lately so i think i'm gonna try and like get into a season because obviously it's like one of those where you can just kind of dive in and you don't really need a backstory but um yeah, I mean, I watch all of those. I don't, I do Below Deck Sailing. I don't really do the other Below Decks. I've watched them, but I don't watch them religiously like everything else. Um, but I'm constant with The Housewives, Summer House, Southern Charm, Family Karma, um, Shaws of Sunset. I do some of the Million Dollar Listings. Um, I mean, yeah, pretty much like all of it, except for like maybe three or four shows. Because, you know, and it's funny because like, you um... Uh, I it's so funny that you mentioned Below Deck because I watched the other Below Decks, mm-hmm. but I never watched Sailing Yacht. Mm-hmm. But I got to tell you, this season, I didn't know if they went and took a nap or or <laughs> got refreshed. But Sailing Yacht has sucked me in, and it's oh, really it's so good. It's the, dra- it's the, the drama. Oh my god, it's amazing. Yeah, I don't um. I'm not really big into the other below decks and I, and I really wanted to get into sailing cause I didn't watch season one, but everyone was like, Oh, it's a whole new cast. So you don't even have to worry about like the past story because everybody's brand new. So I just jumped in with season two and I absolutely love it. Um, my boyfriend watches like below deck and below deck med. So like that would like be his show that like he watches, but I've been told I need to get into it. So I, I think I'm going to start, I think I'm going to try and do the binge, but We'll see. Everything is so time consuming. <laughs> like, yeah, what, yeah. Because but... it's like, oh yeah, that's right. I have something called a job and a life right. that I've got to do. <laughs> I gotta do too. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I don't know when I'll fit it in. Fit it in somewhere. But yeah, sailing. And the thing that's really sucked me into sailing yacht now is now that there is like a pregnancy involved. <laughs> yeah. It's. I mean, it's wild, right? I mean, I like. And the drama behind all of that, I'm like so interested to see how it pans out like the rest of the season and actually find out on the reunion if this man is the father of her child. Like it's gonna be, it's it's like, it's sucking me in. Like, like I can't stop watching. And I don't think that's ever happened before, has it? No, I don't think so, no. Cause you know, there've been, there've been women from the shows who have gotten pregnant, mm-hmm. but there's but there's been no who's the daddy story Mm -hmm, i know it's so good it's so good and especially since like she's like in her 30s and he's only like 24 yeah oh yeah yeah she even says it like during this season she's like i am 32 years old and i am having a fling with a 24 year old like what am i doing she's contemplating a lot of her life decisions this season you can tell she talks about it very openly and it's, it's shocking and great tv that a pregnancy is coming out of this the funny thing is, though, because did you watch last night's episode? Mm-hmm. Yeah. She was, okay, she was me. Like, if I had a job like that, mm-hmm. and I had to deal with these stupid requests from these people, or she was getting in trouble for something stupid, right? Like, mm-hmm. just something dumb. Yeah. I for distracting been, Miguel from his job. Right. That would have been me, too, though. That would have been me, like, what the hell am I doing? What the hell am I doing on this boat? I agree yeah. Yeah, 100%. That really, like, makes you reflect on, like, your life choices. So I get it. And maybe she just feels like she's done it for so long. And, like, she just needs an out. But 
I mean, I'm here for her this season. I'm excited to see what the rest of it has to offer. And it's funny because she, I don't know if you saw like, I don't know if it was a preview or like the mid season trailer or something where she was like, well, if I get pregnant, I'm like, we'll, we'll see what happens. I did. Cause I went, cause she said that I was like, Ooh, right. I was like, Ooh, be really careful. <laughs> right. She broke it into existence. Be, be careful what you wish for. Right. And then, yeah, because let's, and, and yeah, this, I guess two of the girls end up having a fling. Yeah, it was it's Danny and Allie. Yeah, that's from what I can see on the previews, the two of them. Wow. Wow. I mean, so she, she had a hot girl cool. summer. She sure did. <laughs> <laughs> she sure did. Yeah, it's wild. They're all like, they're, I mean, I don't, like I said, I haven't really watched any of the other below decks, but like, they're all like, I don't know, is it the pandemic that they're all just like horny? I'm like, what the hell is going on? Well, okay. I got to, I, JL is hot. Though. Oh, yeah. I don't blame her. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't blame her one bit because he's, oh, no, he's hot. Um, so you, so on Clubhouse, you host a summer house room, correct? Yeah, Friday nights at um, nine, we do the recap and it's so much fun. Summer House, so, so, Summer House and Southern Charm, two of my favorite shows on Bravo. So, so let's talk about Summer House for a second. Summer House is another one of those shows. So it's always kind of been on my radar mm-hmm. and I've always like, I didn't dislike it. And like, whenever I watched it, I enjoyed it, but it mm-hmm. was just not one of my shows. I really like it this season and it is now one of my shows. Yeah, it's really good. Um, I didn't like it and really, I mean, I watched it from the beginning from when it first aired, but I didn't really get into it until season three. So when people are like, oh, like, where should I start? I'm like, and I always recommend starting from season one, but for a show like this, I would say start season three, go three, four, five. And then if you like it, go back and watch one and two so you can see what you missed. But um, it's good. The drama, like the dynamics with them, it's been, I mean, they were the same cast, a majority of them last season and this season. And to see the consistency like from one summer to the next i mean they're crazy and it's it's the drama it's drama filled every week and it is it is so good and, and i hear that the difference is is because during the regular seasons they would only go to the house on the weekends right mm-hmm. but then this year because of covid they were basically stuck in the house yeah they need to keep this I agree hundred percent. I think they need to do the same, the same thing next season or this summer or whatever they're going to do. I enjoy them being stuck in the house. I don't like them going. I mean, I, and I like this format before, if before this season, I would always say I would want to see more of their like day-to-day life in New York city as well as a majority of their weekend in the Hamptons. But I like this now, like having them all like work from the house and then really just be stuck together with that. Like it, you get so much more out of it. And I love the way that they did it this year. And P.S. Okay, so this was the first season that they actually had a black member of the house. Yeah, Sierra. And, and I was a little worried. I was a little worried because as we all know, Bravo has been showing its, its ass mm-hmm. for the past year. Yeah. And, and so I was a little worried. And I think part of the reason why I really like that show so much is we are now at the reunion and it looks like we made it. We made it. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, I, I agree. I was a little bit worried as well. I didn't want to have Sierra be in the position of her having to really school any of her castmates because that's not her job. Her job is to go in there and like really be herself and interact with all of the other housemates. And it really kind of I'm happy with the way that it aired because she's great. I mean, she's successful. She's beautiful. She's fun. And she got along really well with, I mean, with everybody really except for Luke. But yeah, I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. And then even Luke, you know, they didn't get along, but they had a history of sleeping together before. Oh, yeah. So mm-hmm. it was, <laughs> but, but then again, they didn't get along, but it wasn't for like a microaggression or something racist. They just didn't yeah. get along because they were sleeping together and she didn't and like how he treated other yeah, girls. Playing two girls. <laughs> like... and, and, and so for me, that was honestly, that was like kind of, it was, ref- I hate, it. not it sad that that's refreshing? That was refreshing oh, yeah. for me. 
A hundred percent, because I, I mean, I completely agree with you. And it, it, like, that's what I got a little bit annoyed with with um, Southern Charm this past season, because I felt like even though Leva is a person of color, I felt like she really had to like hold her cast accountable for everything. And that really shouldn't, like, it just, it shouldn't have been her job. And she got stuck in that category and I just hated to see it. So I'm happy that with Summer House, it was, it was very refreshing to not have to see Sierra deal with any of that stuff. So I'm, I'm glad that it turned out really well. Now, now speaking of this, how, now, how, what is your feelings about what has been going on the past year with all the, you know, the, the racist bullshit that kind of popped up and, you know, them it seems like like they've they've been trying to put a band-aid on it by oh okay so we're gonna now cast black person or oh now we're gonna cast an asian person what do you yeah. what do you what are your what are your thoughts on that i just think that like they're doing it just to appease the people when it should have been done a very long time ago like it really should have been like i know when they were talking about um like the, like the season on dallas we got dr tiffany moon and I know that they've been trying to get her for the past three seasons. So why, I'm, like, I'm curious as to why now, you know what I mean? Um, Leva, Leva's always been a part of the show. Um, now she's full time, why now? Like, you know what, I'm always questioning like, why now? I'm glad that they're doing it, but in the back of my mind, I'm just like, okay, like, why did it take you this long to cast these people? Um, I mean, and I'm glad that they're doing it, I really, I mean, some of the stuff that they're doing, like the apologies that they're doing, like for Atlanta, for example, with Tanya dressing up as the Indian for Halloween, like the apology that they did with that, I just felt like it was too late. It could have been a pro it could have been handled differently. Um, I mean, I'm hoping that this is pushing them in the right direction, but again, it should have been done a very long time ago. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that Summer House is kind of like the beginning of a new era, yeah. <laughs> let's say. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and I know that with um, Winter House coming, they have four new cast members. Um, one um, gentleman, I believe, is I believe he's African American. The one that did Lindsay Hubbard is now currently dating, and then they yeah. have a, another girl, and I believe she's of of mixed ethnicity. So, and I would love to see them if it works out in Winter House to see them go to the Hamptons with them. I mean mix it up a little bit. I mean, I'm a little bit, it's been two seasons of, well, yeah, two, se two seasons of like a consistent cast where they need to mix up. Right, right. Yeah, and the thing is with Summer House too, the casting's perfect. Don't change, mm -hmm. don't change a thing. It's a yeah. perfect cast. Yeah, I agree. I would just add people. And then wasn't that though, aren't they the cast that for the longest time they would try to add someone new but they would end up being like one season wonders and the, yeah. the house basically ended up hating them pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> right, so yeah, they tried adding, um, his name was Amit, they tried adding him in season two. He lasted one season, he didn't do anything. They added Jordan season three, he was a flop. And then they added Jules and Jordan season four, she didn't work out and he ended up just being like a friend of. Um, so it works now with the people that they have. Like, I, I think that they all, are great. I think um, hopefully this year was a learning experience for Hannah because she's just a wild child right now. Right. Um, but I would I would love to see them all back with the addition of some other people. Yeah, yeah. And 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 now, what are your thoughts on Southern Charm? Like, because uh, like, what did you think of this past? Like, so you mentioned the Leva thing, but then what were your other thoughts about this past season? Um, I like Southern Charm a lot. Like I said, it's, uh, that and Summer House are my favorite shows. I was so excited to see the Leva come on. Um, I really like rode hard for her all season. Um, and then got a little, I mean, I got a little upset with the way that they kind of put her in that role of holding her, her cast members accountable for their actions, especially Catherine Dennis. And it really painted her in the light of people saying that she was bullying and she wasn't bullying. She was just literally like holding her cast members accountable for the things that they were doing. And I think that if it was in a different light, we, she wouldn't have had that been in that position because her, her life is all restaurants, bars, nightlife. With the pandemic, she didn't get to show us that side of her. So she was really stuck in another role. Um, I mean, Southern Charm, I mean, it, they're like the boys really kind of just are like 
COVID what? So like, I didn't really like seeing that part of it, like them not really believing in what was going on. Um, and then the whole Catherine Dennis thing with like just her really like not like having any type of understanding of like what was going on like racially with that statue from her family and like all of that stuff. Um, I'm glad that they addressed it all at the reunion. So I'm happy to see how it like how it all comes together next year. And I think they're adding another cast member and I'm hoping that it's gonna be Vanita who was oh. in Leva. I would love to yeah. see her come in. So I'm excited to see what they do with it next season. Because I didn't watch it. Mm -hmm. But I did watch clips, and that was, Vanita was uh, Leva's Black friend who was basically schooling, yeah, uh, schooling Catherine, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I also didn't like really how they didn't give the full backstory of Catherine's situation, and it wasn't brought out until the reunion that it was all over Catherine's friend wanting to host like a boat Trump rally in Charleston. Mm -hmm. they should have said that in the show so people got a better idea of why people were so upset with her like it, i feel like it just made it would have made a world of difference and i'm hoping now with charleston being back open i mean from the looks of it it looks like they're back to normal like good for them i guess we're not here so right um, and i know that their stuff is open she has a new restaurant so i'm excited to see like a whole nother side of her next season now where are you located i'm in buffalo new york Oh, okay, because yeah, here in California, mm -hmm. it was just announced today that if you are fully vaccinated, you can be outside with no oh. mask. Oh, nice. Woo! Yeah, yeah here's the same thing here too. Yeah, it's so very <laughs> exciting. Um, I, mean, I just like, our stuff has been open for a little while, like restaurants and stuff, every, like at certain capacities and whatnot. And I think May 1st, everything will like reopen to 75% capacity, but we still have a curfew and you still have to like do your part. You know what I mean? Like now at this point, I feel like I would almost be a little bit uncomfortable walking into a restaurant or something without a mask until they're like, okay, everyone's good. But I now, don't know. Now, now, what's your feeling on the various shows, like the various housewife shows that were kind of like, you know, um, quarantine, what? And then they, you, you'd see them at a restaurant or you'd mm -hmm. see them, you know, and they'd have nothing on. How did you feel about that? Yeah. Or no I, mask, not yeah, nothing. No, I, you know, I, <laughs> I did it. I'm assuming that they really didn't have to wear masks while they were filming because I would hope that they took rapid tests. And like, you, I mean, people don't really want to look at the TV, at, like look at their shows and like relive COVID. So I'm hoping the reason that they're not wearing masks is because they were tested and they were considered good to go ahead and be around these other people. So, but it's still like, I feel like a little triggering. Like I watch Atlanta and I'm like, oh God, like another face shield. Or like, even in the trailer for Beverly Hills, I didn't see one mask in sight. <laughs> like, right. You know what I mean? So, and I mean, Dallas is its own entity. They do whatever the hell they want down there. So I, I mean, I wasn't surprised, but I would just, I mean, I'm I, in the back of my head, I'm like, they probably, I'm hoping, I'm assuming the network of the production company took the precautions to make sure that they were good to not have to wear it. But then you see them not wearing them. And then like in Atlanta, for example, when they had that um, black owned business uh, thing that they did at Bailey Wine Center, uh -huh. and then they, they're all in like the Bailey Wine Center together, the, the six of them, and they're all, they all have masks on. I'm like, <laughs> they're picking and choosing when they're gonna do it. And I just, I don't get the reasoning behind it, but I have faith that they were all hopefully tested and given the green light to go ahead and be around each other. Yeah, the only, and and I kind of agree with, you know, I did want a little escapism. Mm -hmm. So some of the times when they'd show them at dinner without a mask, I kind of wasn't mad at it. Yeah. Because I'm, you know, I know that there were, I don't, I know there's some shows, uh, different types of shows where like the cast either quarantined or they kind of had a bubble, like a, you know, a bubble. Yeah. Um, and so I was wondering if that was a possibility that maybe mm -hmm. they quarantined, quarantined really well. And maybe yeah. there were like regular tests, like regular tests on a regular basis. But the only, the only one that it bothered me was I didn't, I, I like to call it, I abstained from 
OC this season. Oh, same. But, I didn't watch it either. But when I would see clips of them with Kelly Dodd, that would piss me off because she was such an anti-masker. And then the other lady, Emily, was such a QAnon. Then that pissed me off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's, I, I completely agree. And I didn't watch OC for the actions of Kelly Dodd. So it really put a bad taste in my mouth with that, especially because they were filming right in the beginning of, like right in the midst of everything that was happening. You know what I mean? So like right. to be so like, uh, like, I don't know, like to be so like, I don't know what's the word I'm looking for. Like to not really like- Like blase. Like to block it out and like not really like to think that this really isn't real. Like it just wasn't, it was the worst timing for them to do that. And that I, I couldn't watch it at all. Especially when one of them got it. Exactly, yeah. Sh Shannon got it. Yeah, well, so did Emily. Right. So did her it, husband. Yeah, her husband like was in the hospital for it. And she's the biggest, and she's like, you know, the biggest QAnon mm -hmm. out of all of them. Yeah. It, it, yeah. So, um, so, you, so you're gonna watch Dallas tonight, even though you've kind of abstained. Now, what made you abstain this season? From doubt. I don't, I really didn't like the way like Brandy was acting or Carrie. Um, and I mean, I watched a little bit for Tiffany Moon because I, I just think she's great and I hope she comes back next season. Um, <clears throat> yeah, just the, like their actions. I just like, if I'm like turned off by the way that they're acting on TV, I could care less if I'm watching the episode or not. Yeah, yeah, they made me mad. I <laughs> spent this season watching it, but I spent the season angry. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I spent the season very angry and, yeah. you know, I think that's the show that needs, it needs, it needs a revamp. It needs a reboot. A any of, any other shows you think need a reboot? Um, obviously OC. Um, Atlanta really was kind of like lackluster for me this season. I wouldn't mind seeing um, like something there, like a little bit of a shakeup, maybe adding. I don't like when they have only five housewives. That's the thing. So I say you maybe get rid of one or two and bring in like three or four. I like the now, cast. Now, like, now, why don't you like? Why don't you like it with only five? Because I feel like there's not enough story. Like, okay. I just, yeah, I don't know what it is. And like, Atlanta really. I mean, I, we all loved the Bolo scene and like those episodes. That was amazing. Other than that, like Drew and I was a big fan of Drew Sedora, like from back in her game days and like all of that stuff. Um, so I was excited to see her on. She didn't really do it for me. Um, Cynthia, I mean, she's always just there, but like her storyline really like didn't do it for me either. I mean, the only thing that I really watched for was to see how she was going to handle this 250 person wedding. Um, other than that, though, like Candy, Portia, Kenya, I would, I would love them to stay and then bring back a few other ones. Okay, do you think they'll ever get rid of Cynthia? Uh, no, she's filming what, for them right now. Right, <laughs> like, like, they like because, her now. Because there was like a rumor that, oh, this is her last season. And then I'm like, oh, but no, but she's in the, in the, in the, in the Justice League yeah, <laughs> right. The Housewives Justice League. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, she's, she's down there. And I mean, if they were going to get rid of her, I don't think they would have sent her on this. Right. It's so funny because I'm calling it the Housewives Justice League. So listeners, for those of you who don't know, they're having... <laughs> um, they're having, you know, a, a bunch of the different Housewives from different franchises. Um, you know, shoot a show. And someone was saying how they didn't like the word all stars. And so, and I'm kind of like, so I'm kind of trying not to say all stars. Right, so that's same. why Housewives, yeah. you know, Housewives, the Housewives Avengers. That right. Oh, happening. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I mean, I don't think, um, yeah, if they were going to get rid of her, they wouldn't have her on this. So, and I'm okay. Uh, Cynthia's one where I'm okay with her being there, mm -hmm. but like, she hasn't really brought anything really. Like, I mean, her wedding this season, but I mean, she kind of got shafted with that because of um, the pandemic, but I would like to see a few new people. I really do. It's so funny with Cynthia because there are a couple of housewives for me, like Cynthia, like in a way, Melissa Gorga, who they don't bring a lot, mm -hmm. but they're not offensive either. Yeah. Or even like Dolores from yeah. from uh, New Jersey. 
Yeah, there are like, people I would just I would, I don't want them to go, but I don't like they don't have to do much for me. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I just like seeing them on TV. Because it was like Teddy Mellencamp, you know, Teddy Mellencamp from Beverly Hills. She didn't do much, but she was an asshole too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and so like Cynthia or Melissa or Dolores, they're not assholes. Yeah, they they kind of ride the fence and get along with everybody pretty much. And they bring some, and, and they do bring something, mm -hmm. but just not, like they're, they're kind of filler almost. Yeah. Oh, and exactly. I mean that in the not best the stars way. stars of the show. Yeah. So, um, you know, so yes, yeah, so Cynthia, but, the, but then Cynthia's also one, if they were to get rid of her, I don't know how it would be without her. Yeah. I mean, I think it was, I agree. Um, and it's kind of similar to what somebody had said um, about New Jersey. I'm just using this as an example um, where they went on the boat and they didn't even realize that Melissa was gone. You know what I mean? Like that Melissa wasn't <laughs> with them on the yacht. Same thing with Cynthia. Like, I really don't know if I would even notice that she wasn't there. You know what I mean? But I would miss her because I like her on my TV. Right. And, and the thing is too, when you think of on the other side of things, if everybody was crazy, then that would be too much. Oh yeah, no, you need a mixture of all of it. So you can't have five to seven like-minded ladies on TV. It would just be a, it'd be a shit show. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It would just be crazy. Now, now did you catch the, per the first part of the reunion? I did, yeah. What do you think? What are you thinking so far? Um, I mean, I don't know. It's not. It's not doing it for me. I really wasn't entertained until the end when Latoya got on and she like started to read Drew, and then I was like, okay, part two. Part two. They're going to get a little dirty, and I'm excited for that. Um, I mean, I don't know. I just like the back and forth between Kenya and Portia is just like, it's just too much. You know what I mean? Like it is just. It is. They go, they go at it, and their their fans are like ride or die too. They go and they go at it harder, defending them. You know what I mean? Than they actually are arguing. Um, I'm excited for part two. I really am. I think it'll be better. And then once the friends come in, Marlo, Shamia, um, and then obviously Latoya, I think it'll, they'll get down to some to some good good dirt. It, it's so funny that you mentioned their fans or like their stands. Mm -hmm. So. I, on Clubhouse, I, I think you were there. I had my first experience with a Stan uh, who was okay. not happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they ride hard, I'm telling you. The, the love that they have for that woman, both of them, whether they're Kenya stands or Porsche stands, like, they, they go hard. And, and the thing is, I, and, I, and I'd love for you to weigh in, I like these, you know, I have the women that I, the women that I like, mm -hmm. I have my favorites, but I don't stand them. Like if you were to talk bad about, like, I like, like Luann is one of my favorites, mm -hmm. but if you were to talk bad about Luann, I wouldn't care. <laughs> like, you know? Yeah, no, I can get both points of views. Like, I mean, it's kind of like, I mean, there's all like, there's things I like about Kenya, I mean, even though she's not my favorite, I mean, I can still appreciate her as a housewife. Um, it's kind of similar to when people were on like Candace or more Candace or Mo, Candace or Monique's side. Like, people wrote hard for either or. And for me, like, same. I can like a housewife and appreciate like their like what they bring as well as their flaws. And I'm not going to get into a knockout dragout with somebody over over a housewife. Like, it's just it's right. not it's not that deep. <laughs> like, because in, in that clubhouse, basically, um, uh, to, to give you guys a little background, so I, I am one of the moderators of a clubhouse room called the Bravo Detective Agency. And literally, it's me and my co-hosts, or co-moderators, Jessica and Andrew, and we literally just dig up old dirt <laughs> and talk about it. Yeah. And we were talking about Kenya Moore, and this... Dan just got into their feelings and like wanted to fight. Yeah, it's it's brutal. And I'm like, dude, it's not that deep. Like seriously, like I, like, I, and it took me a minute to even wrap my head around it. Like, 
you know like this is just fun and like you know what i mean like and also like can't like you don't gotta ride so hard for somebody that you don't even know in real life it's a tv character and i get it we all are attached to certain people but it is a whole another experience when you encounter somebody like that right yeah have you, have you, have you ever dealt with stands uh, oh yeah oh yeah people oh. go people go crazy like in my comments and my dms like they are they're they love who they love, let me tell you. And it is, it is an, it, like I said, it, it is an experience. It is a roller coaster. <laughs> like, I've been called every name under the sun. I'm like, are you, like, it is not, it's, first of all, it's a, it's a meme. Like, it's a joke right. about a show. Like, don't take it so seriously. Right. And, and, and like, you know, like the stand, the stand like started going, you know, you shouldn't be talking about a black woman like that. And it's like, um, yo, stand. I'm black. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's so funny. Because it was funny. They started going in on that and I'm thinking, don't go, don't, no, 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 yeah. no. It's like, I'm black, don't. Yeah, it is. I mean, they listen, they love who they love and they ride hard for them. And you know what? I mean, hopefully, hopefully whoever they're riding for uh, appreciates it, but half the time they're not even going to see you. So. Right. So, so I have a question for you, which, mm -hmm. so what are your thoughts on, okay, so a lot of people, especially with the stuff that happened this past year with, you know, the, the racist people getting caught out, called out and all that, mm -hmm. a lot of people have opinions on Andy Cohen and how he's handling this and whether or not he's a racist, which... I don't think, I think that he needs to be taught some things, but mm -hmm. I do not think he's a racist. I yeah. don't. What, what are your thoughts on Andy Cohen? Um, I don't think so either. I wish he would have went a little bit more into it um, at the Atlanta reunion and kind of just, instead of kind of just like sweeping it away and moving on to the next subject. And who knows, maybe they'll get into it over the next two parts. Um, to me with him, I feel like he is losing his, like, he's losing the flame for me with Bravo. Like, to me, I feel like he's just uninterested. He doesn't mm. seem like he really wants to be at these reunions. Um, and I think he's just, like, losing, like, his luster for it. And, I mean, I don't know. I don't think he's a racist. Though. I think he definitely needs to be taught um, how to maybe handle certain situations or maybe he just shouldn't be the person that should be hosting the reunions with these cast members but um yeah i don't know to me i think he is just losing he's not he's uninterested to me and, and it's and because when you think about it he has his favorites mm -hmm. which include candy mm -hmm. like he loves he loves candy yep um Bevy, I read Bevy Smith's book as part of this um, podcast, and he's oh, yeah, the one I that, that I have to read it. You need to read it. It's mm. so good. It's so good. Yeah, I have hers and hers and Shep. I, I just got Shep's in the mail. I'm reading. I'm reading Shep's now. As a matter of fact, the first the first part of this episode is going to be another chapter of Shep's book. <laughs> oh, yeah. But but Bevy Smith. Mm -hmm credits him like when she got fashion queens she was at a career low mm -hmm. and he basically pretty much discovered her and like saved her career oh. and she credits him for that okay so I, so i definitely i don't think he's racist i think he's one of these people you know if let's face it if if you don't know you don't know and if there's yeah. no one there to sit you down and tell you what's what, mm -hmm. you just don't know. Like, yeah, you just don't know. Yeah, and I think maybe he's just trying to like tiptoe around it so he doesn't really have to get into a deep conversation about it because maybe he just isn't educated about it and he would just rather avoid the conversation. But you can't avoid it forever. So, and I and I think he I think he's kind of damned either way because mm -hmm. if he. Because if he does, you know, if he doesn't say anything, you know, his, uh, the watchers of color and liberal watchers mm -hmm. are going to get after his ass. Oh, if he does say something, the conservative members 
of the audience are going to get after his ass. So he's yeah. pretty much, he's pretty fucked. Screwed yeah, <laughs> either way. I, I completely agree. And Bravo has a ton of conservative watchers. It, yeah. It, it blows my mind. Okay, were you watching it during the Trump-Hillary election? Were you watching Bravo then? Mm -hmm. Okay, so remember how on Watch What Happens, he would do a poll and he'd be like, who are you voting for? Oh, and yeah. it would come out Donald Trump and then we'd all laugh and he'd yeah. laugh and we all laugh like, ah, oh, <laughs> this is a joke. No, and it turned out real. not to be a joke. It was real, yeah. Crazy. I mean, it, it, it is very insane. And I know like it's wild because I even get in the comments like, but not to go back to Southern Charm, but even when I was um, posting about Southern Charm and I was really like posting for Leva and the scenes that they were doing with Vanita and uh, their friends like at the statue that take the takedown of the statue and I would post about it people would dm me or they would comment and they would really be like I don't want to see this on my tv reality is an escape um we shouldn't be talking about this stuff I'm like are you kidding me like th it, this should have been talked about years ago right and, like to see the people come out like to just to even see the things that they would say I'm like you got to be kidding me I didn't like I didn't think that there were these kind of people that were out here watching these shows that are done with this network that really like have such a gay backing and like a person of color backing like everything and i'm just like oh i'm not gonna deal with these freaking karens in my comments like really showing their true colors and i'm like I, it's ridiculous oh my god okay so like for me for example and um i i, ha I had to drop out of a lot of bravo groups mm -hmm. because people were just pissing me off um you know the people that that the one that gets on my nerves the most is like the Stasi and Kristen one and their excuse is always well she said sorry and oh. it's like no yeah. well first of all she did it but saying it's more than just saying sorry mm -hmm. you know exactly. it's exactly and why she's only saying sorry because she got called out right and, you know, then they throw in the cancel culture world, word, which makes me want to punch somebody in the face, mm -hmm. you know, because it's not can it's not cancel culture. It's, yeah. you know, you know, my black ass didn't want to watch your racist ass on TV. 100%, yep. So I'm turning my TV to, you know, I I'm choosing when you're on to turn my TV to 90 Day Fiance. Right. <laughs> yeah. right. <laughs> Oh my God, that's a whole nother entity in itself. 90 Day Fiance is wild. Okay, it's so funny because so I'm a broad, like, so in my house, I'm a Bravo watcher. My husband, on the other hand, is a TLC. So he like watches 90 Day Fiance, all of the spinoffs. Yeah. And so I watch it. Well, I started out hate watching it, mm -hmm. and now I watch it. Yeah, yeah, it, that's a whole other. It really is. I started watching. I, I don't watch. I don't watch it regularly at all. But I was like just flipping through the channels, and I was like at the beginning of quarantine, and I was like, "What is this?" And I was so intrigued by it. And then I got sucked in. And then there's like 90 day, like the other way, <laughs> like then like right. it, it's insane. But it, I, I get how people get sucked into it because that is good. <laughs> And and here's the thing, um, and I, and I don't say this lightly, but Bravo needs to kind of get it together mm -hmm. because these ninety day these ninety day shows are actually becoming more interesting mm -hmm. than the Housewives yeah. because the Housewives now it's been around long enough. They get stuck in their tropes. They get stuck in, you know, they, they, basically, they basically, you and I, without watching a, a housewife season, could probably predict and call the entire season for the yeah. most part. Yeah. Those people on 90 Day Fiance, they're, they're kind of wild cards. Like, you just don't know. Where do you go? What do they have then? Yeah. yeah, there was one I was watching where she moved to another country like for this man and it turns out he was married. I was like, what is going on? <laughs> like, or or there was one where she was going to go marry this guy and she was still married. Yeah. 
and <laughs> snuck back to the states to finish her divorce. Oh my god! Yeah, it's crazy. I would love to see something with that on Bravo, just because it is just so interesting. So, so I do think that they either they do need like either a mix up or a shake up or just some new ideas or something. Yeah, I think they need some new shows, and I think they know that, and that's why they're trying out this like winter house situation. I don't know, but they definitely need some new programming because I mean we haven't had well, I mean Salt Lake City, but that's just another franchise of Housewives. I want something aside from Housewives. So like, I like the family karmas, and I like that kind of stuff. Oh my God, I loved Family Karma. I'm so glad it's coming back. Did you watch Mexican Dynasties? Oh, you know, like a few episodes, but my boyfriend did. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't get into it. I, I, um, did you watch Texicanas? No. Um, it was really good though. Yeah, Texicanas was good. I know, everyone keeps saying to watch Mexican Dynasties as well. I mean, I, I might have to binge that again because I really, I watched like two episodes. And I'll go one step further. Instead of having the Real Housewives of Dallas, they should have just turned Texicanas into a Housewives show. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I, I feel like Dallas, like they're, lo- like, they're losing their audience, and I don't know what they're going to do with it. Like, I mean, it was just like, um, it, like they're, I don't know if the ratings are low or whatnot. Like, I don't know what they're going to do. But, I mean, hopefully I, it comes back and they just revamp the cast. I think, I think they're really low rated. Yeah. And the reason why I think it's because, A, I definitely think that their microaggressions to Tiffany Moon mm-hmm. had something to do with it because they treated her like shit. Yeah. And were blatantly, blatantly like microaggressive and racist about mm-hmm. it. Blatantly. And they- didn't understand why. They were, you know, they, they, they're not understanding why people are saying that what they did was racist and yeah. you know full of microaggressions. I hope they address it at the reunion. They 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 better. Like if they don't, they're gonna. It's gonna be very bad for them. But but it's like you know it's like okay so you have a housewife show centered in Texas mm-hmm. and you only have one Mexican cast member. Mm-hmm. You know my mom is my mom is from Texas. You know I spent half of my life in Texas. Yeah. I know Texas is way more ethnically diverse than what they're showing yeah oh yeah and especially like if they're trying to go with like this opulent lifestyle i am sure that there are other people down there that can do a represent the show better than the ladies that they have on there right now because let me tell you i am sick of uh, cameron westcott and that whole westcott family and her brother-in-law and like all he's he's an asshole right. um and like, I just, it, it's coming back to the show and like, it's just making me lose interest in the housewives. So I'm gonna need, I just, I can't. Like there's gotta be people down there that can do a better job at being a housewife than the ladies that they have on there right now. I would say keep Deandra, keep Tiffany Moon and just get rid of everybody else. Well, here's the funny thing about Clubhouse. Clubhouse is like, because one of the cool things I love about Clubhouse is a housewife will just pop on at any time, yeah. And start chatting. Right. And so, so far, Clubhouse has turned me around about Deandra, because mm-hmm. she popped in, like, last week. Mm-hmm. And by the end of that conversation, I was like, oh, you know what? I actually kind of like her. Yeah. You know, I was always a Tiffany Moon fan. But, you know, Jill Zarin, it, I was not much of a Jill Zarin fan until she popped into Clubhouse. And I'm like, oh, wow, she's funny. Yeah, so, she's easy to talk to. <laughs> uh, okay, so did you did you ever watch uh, uh, Southern Charm New Orleans? Uh, I did not, and that oh. is on my list because everybody says how good it is, and I'm still convinced that it'll come back for a season two. So I'm going. To, wait, was it is season two, right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> but it's funny that you should mention that because. I had someone on my show the other day and we were talking, we were just, you know, shooting the shit. And he was telling me how he met Whitney. Okay. And he, I I forget, like it was at some question and answer thing. I forget what it was. It was something. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned about Southern Charm New Orleans. And he said that Whitney said, well, don't count it out yet. Yeah. And part of the reason 
why it didn't come back was because, you know, the pandemic. Yeah. And New Orleans was hit hard. Yeah, I yeah, and I couldn't believe that because I remember people sending me posts about the um, the cast filming prior to the pandemic. So I'm wondering if maybe they're just gonna redo the whole thing and bring it back for another season. But I've heard nothing but good things about that. So I'm an, I that is on my list for sure. That is the one show. Okay, like it was completely ethnically diverse. Mm-hmm. Like the majority of the cast was black. Mm-hmm. They were all, both all the black people and all the white people, they were all legitimately friends. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was the kind of show where even though they could be bitchy to each other, they didn't come across as gross, if that makes any sense. Like they could be bitchy to each other, but you as the audience still enjoyed them. Yeah. Um, and yeah, no, was, I'm excited to watch that. I, I mean, I, I listen, I was sold after I saw John Moody. I will watch that man. Yeah. On my t- <gasps> oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> but I heard, I heard he moved to LA. But then I guess he could fly back. Yeah, I mean, why not? Tindley did it for Roni. <laughs> like, he could fly. John Moody, John Moody, now that is a body that just, uh, I mean, yeah, he's a gift. And he was shirtless in like <laughs> right. the scenes. <laughs> I love it. Like, like he was one of those people. Like he'd be like, "Hello," and then whip off. His, like yeah. he'd be shirtless in the next scene yeah. for no he, reason. Yeah, and I, I was here for I it. See his Instagram. Like he knows how attractive he is. It's he's a very good looking man. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out how I should mention this. All right, are you familiar? Because John Moody brought this up. Okay, are you familiar with a podcast? And I won't necessarily say the name. I mm-hmm. might later. You never know. <laughs> I'm kind of I'm kind of a wild card that day. I just <laughs> I, I, that way. I don't know. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a it's a podcast by two women, mm-hmm. and they do this poll of who's hotter. Are you familiar with that? No. Like in March, they they do like what they call their March Madness poll. Oh yes, where, yes, 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 yeah. Okay. Is it a podcast? Their podcast, yes. Oh, okay. So, one of the things that just irks the shit out of me is it was the thing, the reason why I'm bringing it up is because their listeners are so blatantly racist oh, that really? well, because okay, so it'd be who's hotter, and they'd have a side by side. Uh, a white, like a white guy and a black guy. Mm -hmm. And no matter how mediocre the white guy was, he would outrank the black guy. Oh, okay. Like for example, and I'm trying to think, it wasn't Shep. I know know exactly who you're talking about because I remember the polls as well. And I I saw the answers and I was like, are you kidding me? Because it wasn't Shep, but it was someone up against John Moody Mm -hmm. and John Moody got like 30%. Yeah. And it's like, what? (laughs) You gotta be blind to choose Shep over John Moody. Like, I, yeah, that's, I remember exactly what you're talking about. I remember seeing the results and being like, these people are delusional because some of the people that won, aside from like some of the people of color, like Eddie Osefo didn't win. And I think he is a very attractive man. Juan Dixon, are you kidding right. me? Like, yeah, it's wild. Right. So, so and, and where I'm getting with this is, do you, do you think that there's a double standard between, you know, the Bravo liberties of color sometimes and the Bravo liberties who, who are white? But what do you mean? Like, do we hold like the white ones like higher? Or like are we yeah, just- yeah. Uh, Even like you know, looks wise, behavior wise. Do you do you think there's a, a double standard? I mean, prob. I mean, probably. I mean, I not that I've really noticed. I mean, I know like even Andy like likes Juan Dixon, and Eddie was like a very big fan favorite for Potomac. People really did like him. Um, so I don't know. I feel like a majority, I mean, the majority of these ladies or whoever is watching these shows, I feel like are older white women who probably live in the country that, you know what I mean? That like probably right. don't even have an attractive black man in their hometown to like know what one freaking looks like. 
but you'd have to be dumb to pick somebody like Shep or something like that over John Moody. Like, I just don't get that. Um, I don't think so. I don't think that there, I don't think there's a double standard. Maybe like in, like within the network, probably, I mean, the viewers probably, but everyone has an opinion. Like, right. You know what I mean? Like not everyone, and I don't agree with half of the shit that those people think, so. Seriously. And, it, and it's kind of funny because sometimes I err on the side of, well, no, maybe, maybe there's not. Maybe we should just give people the benefit of the doubt. Mm-hmm. Maybe it just turned out that way. But then you see someone like, you know, a side by side with this person next to John Moody and John mm-hmm. Moody gets a failing grade and it's like, oh, back the fuck up. No. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. No, I completely, I agree with you. It's just like, and I, I know, like, I know who you're talking about in the, their audience. I mean, I'm not surprised by the results at all. Well, and then the thing is, the thing is that that gets me about that, and I'm 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 doing really well. I'm not I saying know. their names. This is good I for me. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is that annoys me is when it's pointed out to them, they basically say. Well, oh well, that's our audience. We no. can't say anything. And it's like, so then basically you're part of the problem. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they should be doing more on with their platform, post more, post more photos or do more things with, uh, with these other cast members. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if you're only posting like the Sheps and the Austins and the Craigs and you're not posting the John Moody's, the Wands and the Eddie Osefos, like, of course your your audience isn't gonna like they don't know, like not know who these people are. So it's their responsibility to do more to do more with their platform that's right than what they're currently doing, I would think. But right. And Eddie and Eddie Osefo was kind of like a sneak attack. Like I look I was like, whoa. Ho, ho. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean you made it pretty far. <laughs> Eddie Eddie Osefo is like so and that is so funny because that's why there was talk about like they were gonna get rid of Wendy and I was like, no, yeah, right but now. not for her. I know, right? No, I know, I'm happy she's coming back. I'm excited for this next season. I mean, I, we only saw a 10 second clip and I'm like ready for it to come up back on the air. And in that clip, she looked fantastic. It's beautiful, yeah, she looks amazing. It's, so, it, now, that, that cl- the clip that we're talking about, everybody, is, um, there, I guess I, I'm putting this in quotes that they there was an accidental quote quote mm-hmm. link of like five seconds of the show. I love the fact that that they're so, sh- I, and I think that they did that on purpose. Oh yeah, but it was really good because I now want to so watch it. Oh my god, it was so funny. Like I'm like and like the things that these women think of Potomac, hands down one of the best franchises it's so hilarious did you watch from the beginning yeah that, and that's one because i watched it from day one mm-hmm. um my sister lives in the maryland area so i know the area so i yeah. watched it you know I, I had an interest in it but that's the one that it surprises me when people say that they sleep on that yeah, I don't know why, because the drama is so good. I mean, maybe like the first, like, no, I mean, I've watched some, th- people are always like, oh, the first season like really wasn't that good. It really picked up like around season two and three. I've, I've always watched from the beginning. Like, I don't think there's a Housewives franchise that I haven't watched from day one where I had to mm-hmm. go back and then binge everything. So to me, I was always hooked with whatever that they were doing because I was already an invested fan. But uh-huh. I know a lot of people don't watch Potomac, and so that's why people are saying don't sleep on it because it really is so good. The drama, the one-liners, like it's it's ama- it is amazing. So good. D- uh, are you excited about Miami? I am excited about Miami. Um, I, w- I mean, I don't know how excited I am about all the stuff kind of moving over to Peacock, but I'm excited for them to come back because I loved Alexia. I thought she was amazing. She's beautiful. Um, so I'm excited to see her back. Um, and then that Lisa Hotstein, or however you say her last name, um, she's been a little problematic lately, I guess, with like getting the cops called on her for all her parties she's been having during quarantine. 
So I'm excited to see them two back. Adriana, I mean, I don't really care about, but um, I'm excited. I'm excited for them to come back. Yeah, it's a, okay. So I have a confession. Mm-hmm. So so with Miami, like I watched a couple of seasons of it, and then I didn't know why I kind of fell out of love with it, but I did. Yeah. But what I would do, I I loved their opening credits. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'd watch the opening credit <laughs> to the yeah. tape the channel. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I'm not you. Um, I'm gonna. I'm. It's, I mean, it's been so long, right? So like, and I haven't watched since it aired. Um, so I am gonna I'm gonna go back and do a rewatch before it comes back. I mean, I'm sure we have a, at least a year, hopefully. Um, but yeah, no, it's just always so good. Marisol Pat and Mama Elsa was an icon. Like, it was just it was so entertaining. I thought. And I think I'm in a different headspace when it comes to Bravo too, because now you know this was before this was before all the racial shenanigans mm-hmm. was going on back when Bravo was purely escapist television. Yeah. And so now my my mindset is, oh, okay, so they're going to have another franchise featuring women of color. I have to support it. Mhm. Yeah. Like I have to support. Yeah, and I mean, I don't I mean, I don't have a Peacock subscription, but you better believe I'm going to get one. Oh, I have one. It's oh, worth it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to I think I'm gonna, I am signing up for it. I I have one. I'm really bad. So I have Peacock. I have Paramount Plus, mm-hmm. I have Discovery Plus, I have <laughs> all the streaming services. Yep, and then I you have know, Hulu. No, I mean it's I don't I I you, you really do you need them. Well, and then I got to tell you though, so um, what made Paramount Plus worth it was they had the Real World reunion. Yeah. Which is really good. I know, I know. I'm like on the fence right now with that. But I also heard, don't they have like old seasons of The Real World on there yes. as well? Yeah. Yes. Um, I got um, I I got Discovery Plus, mm-hmm. and they do have like different um ninety day spinoffs that are actually really good. Yeah. Um, you know, I got uh, I got yeah, and I have Peacock. So yeah, it's, it's, it, they I find them worth it. Yeah. No, I know. I'm definitely going to have, cause I think, what do I have now? I have like, I, I don't, I don't even know. Like just like the basic, like streaming, like we have the sling and then we have like Netflix, Hulu, but I don't have any of the other ones like the Paramount Plus or like the Peacocks or the Zeus or anything like that. So Peacock and I, Paramount Plus are definitely going to be up there cause I can watch old seasons of the real world, like on repeat. Right. So, so, and so now, so you're in the two Bravo household. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So we watch, we, um, yeah. So, um, my boyfriend watches like, my boyfriend watches all of them. He just doesn't really like, he likes to like rewatch like a lot of the old episodes too. So, like, right now he's in the living room watching like old seasons of OC. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so, and then the only thing that we really watch together is Below Deck Sailing. I like made us like, actually sit down and like have a show to watch together yeah. oh oh yeah but it's, a, it's definitely a bravo household i have like our entire bar area of our apartment i have like andy's baby shower framed and like a party area <laughs> yeah it's it's wild but i mean he I, he lets me roll with it that's cool but so but he's not on house on clubhouse or anything no oh my god no he can't even stand the app he's like are you in that freaking clubhouse again i'm like yeah, you don't understand there's always something going on that people are talking about. And I'm like, it just is, it entertains me and it occupies my time. No, and it's sometimes, sometimes like, because I'm in California, so I'm three hours behind you guys. Yeah. And sometimes just for shits and giggles around 10 at, at night, I'll just pop in just to see what's going on. I'm like, they're still at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I know. And it's so funny to see like the people like talking and it's all, I mean, a lot of it's repetitive and people have been talking about the same thing all day. But I don't care. Like it's enter- it's entertaining for me to listen to and then jump in and share my opinion and jump out whenever I'm done with it. But it's got to be interesting for you guys on the West Coast because do you are you do you have a um, I know my friend lives in Washington. She's three hours behind, but her cable service offer- offers like um, Eastern Standard Time viewing. So do you I have, have Sling. Do that. I have, okay. I have Sling. So okay. everything comes on twice. Okay. So like for example tonight like Dallas Dallas will come on at six o'clock 
-hmm. and then it'll come on again at nine o'clock. So I can watch it with you guys. Oh, I can watch it with you guys. That's perfect. I did not even know that. Okay. Oh, that's good because I know a lot of people on the West Coast are always like, oh, like I have to wait longer now. So the the fun thing for me on Clubhouse is, you know, by the time, so when like every morning we do uh, the Club Bravo news break. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's right when I'm getting out of bed. Oh, okay. So literally for me, whatever breaking news has happened that you guys have been experiencing all day, I'm just waking up. So like Uh, a lot of times, this is the first news that I hear today. I'm like, wait, what? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's funny. Because for me, it's my lunch hour. So, (laughs) you know, it's like, it's like, you know, I'm like, wait, wait, you know, Bethany announced a show. Right. What do you think about that, by the way? Like, I mean, it it looks really good. It looks really good. Didn't it just drop yesterday, I think? Yeah. Okay, I didn't watch it yet, but um, it, I mean, the trailer alone, I was like, okay, I'm here for it. But she's someone who, I mean, I don't need to see back on Bravo or on Housewives, but I'd be interested in seeing her on something else. And this looks like right up her alley, like Apprentice vibes-ish, you know what I mean? So I'm excited. Right. Which I think is, isn't that where she got her start? I think yeah, she Martha was on Stewart. the, she yeah, the Martha, Martha Stewart Apprentice. Mm-hmm. I think it's, I think it's funny though that she, Say what you will about her, but she knows how to compete. Oh, yeah. She knows, she knows the game very well. You know, she, she knows. She She's knows. Like really, hundred, over $100 million doing this stuff. Like, good for her. Yeah. And she started as the poor one on that show. Right, exactly. Like, I think she said she had like $2,000 in her bank account at the time. I was like, oh, goddamn. So, so coming up, um, what would you like to see? Uh, okay, let's get, uh, we're winding down, but you know what? I'm going to name a show and let me know what you'd like to see happen. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Potomac. Oh, Potomac. I would like to see more um, be addressed about uh, Pastor Holy Horror, Jamal Bryant. I want them to see, say what's going on with that. Um that was, I mean, I would like to see more of Karen and Ray's like relationship and how they're doing. Um, I am ready for Robin Dixon and Juan Dixon and their engagement. I'm excited about that. So every everything with Potomac, I am ready for. I, I mean, give it to me all. I'm ready for it. Uh, OC. An, an entire reboot. I want to see, I don't even know if I want one cast member to come back, but I want either all new Housewives or bring Tamara back and then recast around her. Um, but I won't watch unless Kelly Dodd is gone. Okay, and I agree. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, Beverly Hills, that's coming oh, out. Oh, I'm like ready for Garcelle and Sutton to hold Erica to the fire. I want to know everything that's going on with that lawsuit. I don't know how much we're going to get of it because of like the legalities of everything but I want to see all of it I'm ready for it I want her to talk about it you know how Beverly Hills really like alludes to the fact that they're going to give us drama but then they really don't like we don't ever really get anything from them like besides a one storyline like puppy gate or like something like that um I'm ready for Erica Jane and her drama I am ready for Sutton to see her the whole other side of her life that we didn't get to see now that she's a full-time housewife um, Crystal Minkoff I'm excited for because she really brought it for me in the two moments in the um, in the trailer um, and I thought she was going to be very quiet and like reserved just based off of her social media um, she's not um, I mean I don't really care about Rena and her Scott Disick storyline and it looks like Dorit's probably taking a little bit of a back seat she didn't really have anything except that wedding dress line going on um, I'm more yeah I'm ready for Sutton um, Crystal and Erica drama on Beverly Hills. Doreen's probably like, oh my God, they're talking about someone else's finances for a change. <laughs> Thank I'm going <God>. to <laughs> <I'm gonna> keep <laughs> my mouth shut. <laughs> Let's go on over there and design those wedding dresses, girl. <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, b- 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 uh, New York. Um, New York, I'm really excited for Ebony K. Williams. Um, I really hope she... 
I mean, I, I know she's going to bring it. I just hope she doesn't have to get into too much shit with Ramona because she's just an asshole. Um, Emmy K. Williams, I'm excited to see uh, Rashawn as a friend of. I'm excited to tell her how Thompson's coming back for whatever capacity she's coming back for. I really liked her. Um, Lou, I mean, I like, I mean, I, I think it's. Well, I think she has a boyfriend this season, but now they're not together. I'm excited for her drama. Somehow she ended up in a house where her uh, her direct view is Tom's Terrace from his apartment. So I, that's just wild to me. Um, I'm ready for all of it. I'm excited for them to come back. I'm always happy when New York and Beverly Hills are on because those are two of my favorites. Uh, I, know New, I know New Jersey's winding down, mm -hmm. but what would you, anything you'd like to see? Um, I would like to see Teresa's boyfriend. I know he's coming up. Um, so I would like to see more of that. Um, I mean, that's about it. I mean, none of the other ladies really. I mean, I like everything that's going on with Jennifer Aiden and her family. I love seeing them on TV. Um, and then, yeah, that's it with them. And Atlanta. Atlanta, I'm ready for the rest of the reunion. I know Marlo's gonna come out and shake some shit up. I really hope that they don't spend too much time on Portia and Bolo because it really is none of our business if she slept with him or not. Although if she feels like telling us, I'll be here to listen and like hear all of the drama about it. Um, I am, I, you know what, I don't, I really hope that when this season is over, they decide if they're, I, I don't care if Drew comes back next season. I don't really need her. She didn't do it for me. Um, I would like to see LaToya come back. I thought she was funny, even though that's probably a little bit of a hot take. Not really that many people liked her. Mm -hmm. um, and I just hope that they can just resolve all of their freaking issues and move on because they really are the best when they're all having fun. And they're, it's a great cast, but I mean, give me some new girls, get rid of Drew. I'm good with that. Bring Sheree back, yes or no? I agree, Sheree Whitfield. I want to see her and all everything that's going on with Prison Bay. I want it. He's out, right? Yeah, they're together. Uh, yes, yeah, she needs to come back. I oh, agree. I know. I agree. I, I would love. I mean, she's one that I would love to come back. I got really excited when I saw her briefly at Cynthia's wedding, just like in the background. Um, I want her back. I would love to have Phaedra back, but that's not going to happen while Candy's on the show. At least give me sure, and I'll be happy. I would love Phaedra back too. I, this is the rule that I think. This is what I think. I think it should have Sheree back, but this should be the rule. If she's gonna have a fashion storyline, she has to have maybe go on Project Runway or something and have the line made and have like Nina Garcia like watch right. over her or something to make sure it's made and show up with the clothes. Yeah, like you gotta we show product. them. We need product. Yes. Yes, and if that if you could do that, like have Tim Gunn come in and like you know, that would be amazing. Check it out, but yeah, she needs to come back like with the garments. Yeah, if, I, I'm here for that because it's like Sheree. If Brooks Marks can get his shit together, you have no excuse. Agreed, and he's a child. <laughs> <laughs> he may only have one sweatsuit, but listen, at least he showed up with the product. Right, at least I guess that was the thing. People were like, "It's a sweatsuit," I'm like, but at least he showed he had a he had a fashion show with yeah. fashion, unlike someone else we know. Right, <laughs> exactly. Oh my God, Sheree. Oh. Salt Lake City. What do you want to see um, from that? Salt Lake City. I am. You know what? I am excited to see more of Marianne Cosby. She's one person that I really didn't like. I wasn't looking forward to, and I really prejudged her based off of the whole grandpa thing, but I'm like letting that go. And I want to see more of her life because I thought she was great at the reunion. Um, love, I love all of the girls on there. I am excited that Jen Shaw is still filming. I can't wait to see how they really like give us all of that. I wish she would just stay off of freaking social media, but I'm also here for that too, because like what, like I'll just keep spiraling girl. Like you're just, <laughs> you're giving me the content and you're entertaining me. So it is what it is. Um, yeah, I'm excited to see all the reactions to everything that's going on with Jen Shaw. Um, and I left last season really liking uh, all of the ladies. So I'm mm -hmm. happy that they're all coming back and I can't wait for them to give us everything that we want on season two. And that one, I, I know this sounds really mean, but I'm hoping like the camera is like caught her being cuffed and then putting her in the car. Same. I want to see it and I can picture it already, but a montage of like, news headlines flashing on the screen. You know what I mean? Like, right. the, <laughs> like, yeah, I think this is what's probably gonna happen. The news, 
like they'll probably show somebody on the phone like hey i'm having a good time blah, blah, blah. and then they'll go one day later right, right, right. And, and then then they show all the headlines and then they show her being walked to the to the police car and then they don't even have an opening credits that way they just start it up oh my god that would be amazing <laughs> like listen call the production company and give them that idea because i need to see it that we better we, we better see it arrest um southern charmed Oh my God, the Southern Charm, I'm so excited for. I am so happy that Leva and her stuff is, uh, her restaurants and everything are open. She has a new restaurant. I'm excited to see what she's going to bring. Um, I want all I want all of the cast back and then I'm happy that allegedly rumored is Vanita is coming, but we'll see about that. I really think they need another person to call her on that show. Um, so I, they, I mean, they always bring it. I mean, they're degenerates, but I love watching them. <laughs> And I guess the news came out that VPR is back and they're filming. Yeah, I'm excited and, about that. I wasn't ready for it to be over. And it looks like everybody's back, of course, other than Stassi, Kristen, Jax, um, Brittany, yeah. and the newbies who I didn't care about anyway. Yeah. But what, what would you like to see there? I want to see it more focused around Tom Tom. I want the show to be more centered around Tom Sandoval and Tom Schwartz and Ariana and Katie. I don't know what capacity Lala is going to bring because she's a new mom and doesn't work. So um, I'm excited. I, but I, like I said, I'm ready for it. I'm happy Jax and Brittany are not going to be on. Um, I'm happy that Katie and, or Stassi and Kristen aren't going to be on. Jax, I'm sorry, uh, Tom Sandoval, Tom Schwartz have always been my favorites there. And they've really been like the center of the show for me. So I'm excited and I hope they really pivot and go more with their restaurant. So we'll see. Um, I mean, I could really care less about James Kennedy and Raquel. They really don't do it for me. So I'm surprised that they're even back. Um, yeah, but I'm excited to see what, what's going on with the Toms and their ladies. And, and and I agree with you about them focusing more on Tom Tom, mm -hmm. just because that would show like a natural evolution of the show. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, they started out as, you know, the waiter and the bartender. Yeah. They started bartender. Now they own their own place. I would love it if it pivoted, yeah, and focused more on Tom Tom. Especially since Tom Tom is fun. It's a, Tom, I've been to Tom Tom several it, times. Tom Tom is fun. Oh, really? Tom Tom is a lot of fun. I like, cannot wait to get out there and go. Like, that's you need to come. And we need, you need to come and we need to have a Vanderpump evening and go to Sir Pump and Tom Tom. Because they're all like around the corner from each other. Yeah, I know. I, I, like, oh, I'm ready for it. It's like, it's, it's happening. So hopefully once everything is back open. Yeah, I was so bummed because yesterday was my birthday. Yeah. And initially, initially my husband's like, well, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? And I'm like, Let's just go to Sir, but Sir is closed on Mondays. Oh, really? Yeah, a lot of the restaurants here are closed on Mondays as well. But so did you have I, a good thing? I did. Good, good, I good. did. I went out to it's, we went out to Italian food. Um, my daughter. Uh, this is this is my first. Oh, your first, first, first day as a dad. Yeah, so she made a cake. Uh -huh. She actually bought she bought me some clothes that actually were not bad. <laughs> 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 well, thanks, sweetie. I'm hiding somewhere. <laughs> like, she no, they they weren't. She bought me. She bought me some skinny jeans that looked pretty good. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But um, but yeah, one of the things I'm wondering about VPR, I'm wondering who's gonna get the villain at it, since Jax is gone. Like all the yeah. villains are gone. Yeah. And so there has to be one. James Kennedy. Probably. Yeah. Probably. And yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited because I think that if they focus, I agree with you, if they focus on Tom Tom, that's going to breathe new life into the show. Mm -hmm. I agree. And, and I, mean, like, I know, I don't even know if those two people still work at Tom or that one guy. I was assume Max still works at Tom Tom, but I mean, he doesn't have to be in the show. But. And I'm wondering. Um, because you know that you near know that black guy Richardson, Richardson really works there. Yeah. He really works there. Does he work um, at Tom Tom? I thought he worked at Pump. He worked actually Pump and Tom Tom are pretty much next door to each other. They're only a couple of doors away. 
Okay. So I've seen him at I've seen him at Pump, mm-hmm. but then I've seen him at Tom Tom, and okay. I'm wondering if he's in more like because he was a manager, right? Mm-hmm. Because I've seen him at Pump, and I've seen him at Tom Tom, and like wearing a suit and really oh, okay. dressed up. Yeah. So I'm wondering if he's a manager in some capacity at Tom Tom as well. Oh, oh yeah, I would love to see him on the show. He so just literally- pops in here and there. And because since you know, since one of the complaints is that they didn't have any people of color other than Faith, I'm wondering if he's going to get some kind of promotion of sorts. Yeah. I mean, I would hope so. I'm excited to see what they do with it. Yeah, no, I'm I'm very excited. And yeah, Larry, when you come, you need to come to LA and we need to like, you know, I hit know. It. all of you guys, there's so many of you guys out there. I talked to Kiki Monique, she's out there too. I'm like, I need to come and visit you people. Kiki, Kiki, Kiki Monique is the reason why I now like go to Courage Bagels all the time. Oh my God, for Bagel Fridays, I'm like, oh geez, I like, I wish I lived out there. They don't have those places where I am. She she has not steered me wrong yet because I like take her recommendations to go. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm looking forward to it. I t- I told her I was like I'm gonna come out there. We're gonna we're gonna go have some drinks and have a good time. And she's like I'm here. I'm ready for it. <laughs> yes, yes. Anyway, Larry, it has been so much fun having you on. It has been oh, so much fun. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I'm happy we finally got to talk. So so how can how can everybody find you? Yeah, so I'm just on Instagram. It's at Bravo by Gaze. I have Twitter as well. Um, same handle at Bravo by Gaze, but I mean, like, don't really go there for any content because I really like just go there to scroll and see like the news articles and stuff like that. And I post occasionally, but all of my content is um, on Instagram. So yeah, that's it. And and also, you know what? I actually what I so so I'm like reading the Shep book right now, mm-hmm. and there have been a couple of other people who have been on the show who have said that they are also starting the Shep book. Yeah. And what I would like to do is have a special episode, kind of a book club episode, where the different people who have mentioned to me that they're going to read the Shep book, that we all come back together and talk about it on this podcast. Would you be interested in joining? Yeah, 100%. Just let me know when, and I will make sure that I have the book done by then. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, for sure. Because it would be, it would be you, do you know Samaj? Yeah. It would be you, Samaj, and Blake. Uh, Blake Kaleho? Yeah. Okay, yep. So, From uh, House Lives Amen? Yes, exactly. Yes, yes. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, let me know when. I'm totally down. Because I'm reading because I'm reading it now, and I need, <laughs> I need some people, I need some people to process with. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, I will, I will start it. Yeah, I mean, I, listen, I, I don't leave my house really much, so I, give me a date and I will have it done for you by that time. It's a deal. Well, once again, thank you for coming on, and everybody else, keep reading. Bye. Bye.